Is this a good time to buy a home with prices going down? Or is this a terrible time to buy a home with interest rates skyrocketing through 2022 here? In this video, I'm gonna jump right into that and let you know if this is a good time for you to be buying a home or not so much. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos on what it's like living over here in Seattle and the local real estate market. I love helping you guys out that reach out to me here from YouTube. I am an active real estate agent over here and many of you have reached out and I've helped you along your home buying journey. So feel free to reach out to me if you are looking to move over here or you already live in the Seattle area and you're looking to purchase a home over here. But like I said, this video is about the current real estate market and if it's a good time or if it's a bad time to sell a house. There's a lot going on in our economy right now. Interest rates have skyrocketed. The real estate market has really dropped off a cliff from where it was in terms of the activity going on in the market. Not necessarily prices dropping off a cliff, but the activity going on in the market has really slowed way, way down here into the end of 2022. And there's a lot of uncertainty in our market, not just the real estate market, but the economy as a whole. So I want to talk about, you know, if, if this is a time that you should be buying a home. Now, this isn't for me to push you in one direction or the other um, and convince you to buy a home. However, I want to break down the facts of what's actually going on right now. You can, you can go to any time period in a real estate market in the history and give a reason of why it's a good time to buy a home and why it's not a good time to buy a home. There's always pros and cons to buying a home in any specific real estate market. It's never a perfect market to buy a home. Not that I've ever seen. And it's never uh, the you know absolute worst market where you should never buy a home. So there's always opportunity and there's always downside. So we're gonna talk about all of that here on this video. Now, along with that, what's most important is your specific goals. And if this is a good time for you specifically or not, it could be a great time for somebody else and not a good time for you. It's about your short-term and your long-term goals. If you're planning to buy a home and this is gonna be a five to 10 year home, you know, it's, it's probably a decent time for you to still buy, you know, if, if this is not gonna be a short-term home for you. Now, if you're somebody looking to get into the market and you're saying, hey, I may move out of the state in a couple of years and I'm just gonna sell that home that I'm buying right now. Well, I'd be more cautious. We don't know where values are gonna grow over the next couple of years, how quick they're gonna grow. Right now they're going down. So if you're planning to get out of that home that you're gonna buy within like two years, you may not have enough equity to be able to sell that home in two years. Maybe you will, but we don't know that. The market is not showing that right now. So this is more of a good time for those of you that might be going long-term and, and having a three to five to 10 year house. Now let's jump into some of the numbers because I want to show you where we were at at the peak of this market in April of 2022 and where we're at right now in November 28th is when I'm filming this video, November 28th, 2022. I want to show you specifically the median home prices, the interest rates, and what those monthly payments would be at those prices. So you can compare the peak of the market in terms of home prices with really low rates versus the prices dropping off with much higher rates here and what those differences would be in those monthly mortgage payments. So let's look at the Seattle metropolitan area as a whole. Now this is three different counties, not just the city of Seattle. I'm doing the whole metro area here for you. So this is King County, Snohomish County and Pierce County. So in April of 2022 is really when prices peaked here. The median home price in these three counties was $815,000. Now here in November of 2022, prices have dropped 15% since then. So they haven't fallen off a cliff, but they have definitely dropped. Prices now are 690,000. This is the median home price in the Seattle metropolitan area. 815,000 down to 690,000. Now, in if you were to buy a home in April of 2022, you were probably getting a rate right around 3.5%. That's right about where we were. Today, November 28th, 2022, average rates here are 6.87% today. Of course, this varies day to day. So if, if you're watching this video and it's 2023 already, um, or even later on down the road, rates are gonna be probably different than what they are today. So we, we will need to look at current rates at that time, but this will give you a good idea of what's going on right now. So right now rates are 6.87%. All right, so if we bought this $815,000 home in April of 2022, 
at a three and a half percent rate and we put 20% down, which is $163,000, our principal and interest payment on this home would be just over $2,900. That's principal and interest payment. Now, if you factor in uh, your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance for kind of your total monthly mortgage payment, it'd be just over $3,400. Okay, let's jump over to today's scenario again. At 6.87%, if you put 20% uh, down, which is $138,000, your principal and interest payment would be just over $3,600 a month and your total monthly mortgage with that same property tax and that same homeowner's insurance would be about $4,100 a month. So you can see your payment, if you were to buy the same house today in November of 2022 versus in April of 2022, your payment would be about $700 higher approximately. With this specific example, you'd be about $700 higher. Even though the prices have come down with as much as the interest rates have gone up, your payment about $700 higher than it was at the peak of prices in April. I really wanna bring in uh, my, my preferred lender that a lot of my buyers use when they buy houses to talk about interest rates right now because there are a couple of great options, one called a 2-1 buy down and one called a 3-2-1 buy down in order to buy this interest rate down so you can take advantage of these lower home prices but you can also get a better rate than what the national average rate is of 6.87 right now. You have some options to get this rate better. So you have a lower monthly payment and you bought that home for less than what you would have in the spring of this same year. So let's jump in with Blake here and talk about that a little bit. All right, everybody. So like I said, I wanted to bring Blake in here. Blake is my preferred lender. So if you guys are moving over to the Seattle area, first off, make sure you contact him. He does a great job with all of you. It's a perfect resource if you're thinking about moving over here and have questions on that mortgage front. But like I said, I wanted to jump into these rate buy downs, this 2-1 rate buy down and this 3-2-1. So we can kind of show you how you can reduce these payments when interest rates are as high as they are, and we can make this more comfortable for you. So first off, I just want Blake to go over just a general overview of what a 2-1 is and what a 3-2-1 buy down is. Yeah, so three two ones and two two ones um, are a, they're just specific types of what's called a temporary buy down, right? Um, and what a temporary buy down is is um, it's really just a financing technique that we use um, since we we service your loan um, to subsidize your mortgage payment with um, funds from an escrow account that we collect at closing um, upfront from the seller um, or from a credit from ourselves um, to lower your payment. So, um, yeah, so a three, two, one and a two, one, for example, um, those are the two that we're going to kind of dive into today. Uh, and I'll start with the three, two, one. So your payment for that first year would be as if, um, and that's a key word there, um, as if, um, your, your interest rate was 3% lower than what your note rate was. Um, so for the first year, it's 3%, second year, it's 2%. And then that third year, it's 1%, whereas the two, one, It'll be 2% lower for the first year and then 1% for that second. A um, couple things to just clear up um, initially off the cusp here. Um, this is a fixed rate mortgage. It's not an arm. It's not an adjustable. So at the end of that, either three-year three, three year term or two-year term, um, your interest rate will not continue to go up. It will be um, whatever the note rate is um, that you lock it at that time. So when we talk about three, two, one and two ones, that's uh, specifically what we're talking about. Perfect, awesome, I appreciate that. So I had Blake run the numbers for us just on this example that I went over earlier in the video, purchasing a house at today's market price of 690,000, that same house was 815,000 back in April. So we're gonna run this on that same scenario. I mentioned if you go 20% down on the $690,000 house right now with the 6.87 rate, it's current market average right now, your monthly mortgage is going to be just over $3,600 a month, like we just talked about. Now, let's talk about how that 2-1 is going to change that. So like Blake mentioned, year number one, it's as if it was 2% lower. So you're talking 4.87 is what that rate would look like, basically. So in year one, that principal payment would go down from just over $3,600 to about $2,900. So it's about $705 in savings in year one. Funny thing about that. When I compared the $815,000 price from April and what that payment was versus at $690,000 at the current market rate, that is also about a $700 difference. 
So you're basically getting down to that same payment that we were at at the peak of the market while purchasing a house for $125,000 less than it was. So you're getting a much better rate. On year two of that 2-1 buy-down, that payment's going to go up about $3,265. So you're still saving about $360 a month. So with that 2-1 buy-down program, you're saving in total about, um, let's see here, we're saving on year one about $8,400 and on year two about $4,300. So over the two years, by doing this 2-1 rate buy-down, you're going to save about $12,700. So it's a good amount in your pocket that you can save and it's, you know, it's going to be much more easier on your pocketbook when you're looking at those monthly payments. So yeah. And ahead. one quick note on that too, because this is a really big, uh, uh, well, I don't want to say error, but kind of misconception here um, with that. And I just want to touch on that because yeah, yeah. a lot of, a lot of clients when they hear this, you know, and they hear, oh, we're saving 700 bucks a month um, for the first year, we're saving 360 bucks the second year. Where's the gimmick? right? Where's the catch? Um, out of that 705, is that really $300? Because you jacked up my payment $400, you know, to, right, right. to, to finance this or, or to cover your losses. Um, and I wanted to dispel that immediately here. Um, because I know whenever I say you're saving this much per month, that's usually a question that my clients either ask me, or I could kind of tell it's it's in the back of their head and, and they're thinking about it. Uh, but maybe they just don't ask me up front. Um, here's the most important thing. When we're saving, when you're saying you're saving $705, that is what, uh, that's compared to what the payment would be if you did not use this program at all. So there's no fees baked into this. Um, it's not like, you know, okay, if the note rate is 6.875, we're going to get you seven and a half. And then, you know, it makes the numbers look really drastic, but really it's not. No, um, this is, so 6.875, we're using this for, for an example we get you whatever the going rate is at the time. So it's not like we're gonna increase the interest rate. Um, if we do a lender paid, sometimes if we don't get enough credit from the seller, sometimes we can add that into the, to the interest rate a little bit. But if not, if it's covered by the seller, you're getting the normal interest rate. So the interest rate is the same as though you're doing a 30 year fixed conventional, a 20% down, no temporary buy downs, nothing. Um, so when we're saying you're, you're saving 705 bucks a month on the two one, we mean you're saving 705 bucks a month, um, compared to what you would do if you didn't use this program. If we're in a market where the sellers are willing to give you three, four, five points, this is a no brainer. Um, and that, uh, those, those savings are truly our savings, not adjusted, um, for any increases in interest rates, anything like that. You would actually save that much money with this, with this program. Yeah, and that's a great point. And that's why this program is, is such a useful tool right now and why so many people should be considering it right now. And so if you look, you take that same example and you look at the 3-2 buy down or 3 two, one buy down, sorry, you're going to have even more dramatic savings. On year one, your savings are going to be over a thousand bucks a month, about a thousand thirty in this scenario. That's that's over 12 grand a year in savings. Year two, it's going to be about 705 bucks a month, like example one. And year three, about 360 bucks a month, like example one as well. So you can see on this on this three, two, one buy down, you're saving over the lifetime of these three years, you're saving over twenty five thousand um, dollars in true savings, like Blake mentioned. So uh, you can see the numbers here on the screen that I threw up here uh, and how this applies. Of course, everybody's situation is different. And based on what the actual rate is, we're talking about what the rate is today, the average rate. So if you're watching this video down the road, the rate's going to be different and you're probably not shopping for exactly a $690,000 house. So if this is something you're interested in, just make sure you reach out to us, make sure you reach out to Blake and he can kind of run numbers more specific for your scenario. Um, but, you know, kind of circling back when Blake was mentioning the buyer or the seller paid uh, fees for this, it's a buy down. So there are fees to buy this rate down, this temporary rate down. But like Blake mentioned, in this market where competition is almost non-existent on homes and homes are sitting for two, three, four weeks at a time, we can negotiate the seller to pay for this for you. So not only are you saving this, you know, thousand dollars a month on year one on this three, two, one and all the way through, you're also having the seller pay for this or pay for at least part of it. So Blake, maybe talk a little bit about what this, this, you know, looks like. I know you mentioned for the yeah. two one. Mm -hmm. We need about, you know, a little over two points and for the three, two, one, a little over four points to get this mm -hmm. paid for. 
And there's different options to do that versus, you know, all the seller paid for it or, or yeah. half and half and different ways to contribute to that. Yeah, correct. So um, obviously in, in, you know, I, I think a, a, another conversation I have with clients too, um, and it just speaks to uh, what, you know, how unique of a market we're in. Um, clients always, you know, ask me, well, if this is such a great deal. Where was this last year? Where was this two years ago? Where was this three years ago? And the answer to that is we weren't getting the credits that we're getting now. Um, you know, you've been in this in this industry um, as long as I have. You know, when do you remember if there was ever a time where we were getting five points from a seller? Never. Yeah, right? never. <laughs> never have. Um, you know, I mean, I know a couple times, you know, I've, I've asked you and we've talked about, you know, one of our clients deals and it's like, hey, you know, interest rates are going a little bit higher. Let's see if we can get a point um, or, or maybe two points. And that's a stretch, you know, or let's get the seller's <laughs> cover closing costs. Having a seller's closing uh, cover closing costs and getting an additional two, three points is unheard of. Um, but that's where we're in right now. Yep. Um, the reason for it is homes flew off the shelves the last couple of years. And, uh, and now they're sitting 30 days and a lot of people are in panic mode. Um, so we're able to get that. So, yeah, you hit it on the head. 2-1, um, it, it, it ends up being about two and a quarter points. Now, points, uh, one point is 1% of loan amount. So a five hundred thousand dollar loan amount, one point is five thousand, right? So two points would be ten thousand. So we would need two and a quarter to fund the two one. Um, that can be covered um, completely by the seller. It's best if it is. Um, if we need to um, use a little bit of lender credit, we can do that as well. Um, it can be paid for various different methods. Um, we can do a lender paid, and um, we can use uh, the interest rate. You can you can tack on the note rate a little bit. Um, if you're if you are very confident that interest rates will go down in the future, um, three two one's a little bit higher just because if you if you look at that first year savings, it's 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 quite a big amount um, there. You know, if you're gonna on that example we use, you're saving almost thirteen thousand. So um, it's about it's a little over four points. So um, you know, for my clients who are going conventional and they're doing ten percent down, um, asking five points, uh, which again, sounds like, you know, a lot to handle until you realize that the average home drops their price, you know, once or twice um, in the time it takes to sell. And during that period, they can drop off 40, 50, 60 grand of uh, value. Yep. And mo you'll find that most of these three, two ones can be covered by about half of the average um, sales reduction. Yep. So um, this ends up being a great deal for obviously the buyers. It ends up being a decent deal for the listing agent as well and those sellers. Um, you know, covering this one, the example we used twenty five thousand. Um, you know, on a six hundred ninety thousand dollar home, you know, it might it might be reduced down to six fifty, um, and this would be a much more effective way to do that because it it you know that forty thousand um, dollars isn't going to go anywhere near as much of a payment reduction as using this program. Yeah, that forty thousand dollars. If you do the three, two, one, that's not going to save you a thousand dollars a month on your monthly. Yeah, <laughs> right. If right. You that in credits, it can maybe so. maybe a hundred with that, and yeah. and you know some points towards the interest rate. Sure, exactly. Uh, nowhere near is it going to touch the thousand dollars. Yep, and that's why this is can be a win win. You know, for sellers that are sitting on the market, I've seen sellers that have reduced their price a hundred thousand dollars because they can't sell right now, and and they're they're getting desperate to get rid of the house. So this can be a win win for everybody because you know, the amount that they give you towards a credit versus having to reduce that is going to impact you more and make it more favorable for you, therefore making it a bit more favorable for them as well. So um, I know Blake mentioned earlier, it's not an adjustable rate mortgage. Once you're at that market rate after uh, after the end of this temporary buy down, that's your rate. Now, I know people are going to ask, you know, when can I refinance? If I'm in the middle of a three, two, one on year two, and the rate actually drops, lower, the Fed starts reducing rates again, and the mortgage rate actually drops lower than where I'm at in the middle of this temporary buy down, when can I refinance? So what's a, what's a good answer to that for you right now? Yeah, so this is, this is uh, um, hey, obviously, let's get the cat out of the bag. Interest rates suck right now, right? Yeah. They're, they're yeah. high. <laughs> they're, they're rough. Um, you know, uh, I cringed every single time people said they're still historically low. Um, doesn't tell the whole story. We've never had interest rates triple in the uh, matter of six months, you know. Um, but hey, you know what? One of my favorite aspects on this one is, uh, okay, so say say no rate 6.875. Um, I know you know your stuff. Quarter one, we're looking at, at, at some good potential um, rate movement, right? We're expecting that. Yep. Um, 
so yeah, a lot of clients are going to look uh, to refinance um, and maybe maybe get to something. Maybe they can get five and a half. They're at six point eight seven five. Obviously, with this three two one, you know, uh, I would use that first year and and keep the savings there. But then you know, next year it's four point eight seven five. You know, maybe uh, uh, maybe in this case, obviously twenty percent down, so there's no MI. But you know, maybe they had a little bit of MI that they want to drop off there. Um, whatever, right? Whatever the 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 reason is to refinance at that time. Uh, the best part of this program is that money that's in that escrow account. So in this case, $25,000, that's yours. So um, so if you refinance before this before this program runs out, the end of the three years, whatever is remaining in that um, actually goes towards, goes towards a principal reduction. Um, so say you're halfway through it, you have, let's say, 10,000 still there. Um, let's say your, your, your loan amount at that point is, you know, 540. Um, well, your new loan amount is now 530 um, and you can refinance it um, anytime. There's no, this doesn't lock you in for those three years. You don't have to wait for the buildup phase to, to complete. Um, you can refinance as soon as it gives an advantage to the homeowner. Okay, so that gives us a good rundown of some ways to take advantage of this market. Even though rates are pretty high, you still have options to get those rates down and take advantage of a better rate um, than what you could get normally right now with the standard rate and have those those much lower home prices than what we were seeing earlier this year. So there is still some great opportunity for home buyers in this market. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there's pros and cons to every market. It's not We can't pretend like one, one specific market is 100% perfect for buyers or one specific market is 100% terrible for buyers. There are pros and cons no matter what market we're in. So let's look at our previous market, uh, when we were through really these COVID years, these two years where the market just absolutely exploded all over the country, and we hit these peak median home prices in Seattle Metro of 100 or 815,000. Let's look at the pros and cons of what that market was. So the pros, of course, right off the bat, low interest rates. I mean, we've, we've been talking about this the whole video. The interest rates were incredibly low, lower than maybe we'll ever see again. Who knows if we'll ever get back down into the low threes or even the high twos again like we were for a while. So that is the main pro to that market, which of course means a lower actual monthly payment. Fantastic pro. Now there are a lot of cons to that market, our past market. Those cons were the competition was absolutely brutal. You did not have many choices of homes that you could buy because homes had 10, 15, 20, 25 offers on them. I, I had situations where my clients were putting in offers on homes that had 25 different offers on them. How difficult is that and how much you have to overpay for those homes? Another con to that is because you're overpaying for those homes, in order to have any shot at getting a home, at least here in the Seattle area, you had to commit to paying over the appraisal amount to get that home. So if you were, say, putting 20% down on your initial loan to get that home, and the home didn't appraise for your contract price because you bid so far over asking price, say it came in $50,000 low, you were spending an extra $50,000 cash out of pocket on top of your original down payment just to make that sale close because you have to commit that upfront to the seller in that market. Appraisals basically didn't matter. You had to pay more than what it appraised for in order to get that house because there was 15, 20 other people lining up that would have done that and you would have lost the house if you weren't committed to that. So that was one huge major downside. This, a second downside was you were not getting any closing cost help from those sellers. Of course, this plays into this whole ultra competitive market that we were in. You could not negotiate the seller to pay your closing costs because 15 other buyers weren't asking for it. What, what seller would choose your offer asking for help on your closing costs when all the other offers were a lot higher asking for no assistance? So you couldn't get financial help on that end either to reduce your out-of-pocket costs. A third con was inspections. You really had to, there were people that waived inspections entirely. I never recommended my, my buyers waive inspections, but we usually got a pre-inspection. Basically, we got an inspection report before even putting an offer on the home. So you were putting an offer on that home as is. You were buying the home as is. Assuming there wasn't something major that came up at that inspection where you decided not to put an offer in, you were putting an offer in as is and you had to because again, 15 other people were putting offers on that home as is. So you had no negotiation room to ask for certain repairs or ask for money to fix things around the house. You were buying that house as is. 
So that was another big con to that market. Now let's move to this market. Here, as we've adjusted into this market, November 2022, the pros and cons. Really, the, the, the main pros right now are you have way more options and leverage when you're negotiating and looking for homes. There are hardly any buyers out right now. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, compared to what we were at before, there are not nearly as many buyers out looking for homes. So homes are not getting multiple offers for the most part. You have options. Uh, you don't have to settle into a home that you're just kind of okay with because it's the only option you have. You have a lot more options now. Now, of course, we're in November, so inventory is limited, and that's going to limit some options on that front. But in terms of the competition, there is none right now, so you have way more options in terms of different homes that you could get into. That number two pro is the closing assistance or the seller paid buy downs. Like we just talked about with Blake, the seller can pay those interest rate buy downs for you, so you're not even paying those out of pocket in order to get that lower interest rate because the seller doesn't have any other offers. They have to negotiate with you if they want to sell their house. You can, we can negotiate that into the contract where the seller is paying those closing costs or those buy down fees for you, saving money out of pocket for you and you still get that much better interest rate than the average right now. So that is a huge, huge pro to this market. And number three is you can negotiate repairs. Again, there's hardly any other offers on homes. We are putting offers on homes with full inspection contingencies for our clients. And you can go back to the seller after that inspection and say, hey, we need a credit to fix these items or we want you to fix X items before closing and we have that leverage to negotiate because they don't have any other offers. There's not anybody else lining up at the door to buy that home as is. So we have much more leverage to negotiate certain things with that house. So a lot more options here in this market. Now, let's talk about the con and it's pretty obvious. The con is interest rates. This is what has changed the market is interest rates and I think that's very clear at this point in this video. But that's the con to this market is you've got those right now the national average of 6.87%. Now you can overcome those interest rates with those buy down options we talked about with Blake. So keep that in mind, but that is the main con to this market right now. So your monthly payment is likely going to be higher unless we get, of course, one of those buy downs, then we can temporarily get that payment lower. So looking forward with this market, trying to figure out what's going to happen as we finish off 2022 here and go into 2023, the Fed has come out and said basically, Rates are going to keep going up in 2023. We don't know if they will keep going up the entire year or if it's just going to be quarter one that they go up. Who knows? None of us can predict that. We don't have a crystal ball. It's impossible to know what the market's going to do next year. But we do know the Fed plans to raise rates a little bit more. So does that mean prices will continue to come down a bit? Possibly. And rates will continue to go up a bit? Possibly. Both very likely scenarios. I personally kind of doubt that Prices will continue to go down for the entirety of 2023. I think we level off at some point. I don't see us falling off a cliff or anything like that. Personal opinion, of course. Um, but I think as we move through 2020, 20, or 2023, get midway through the year, I think we, we level off and maybe we start to see a gain of prices again later in the year. Who knows for sure, but I would not be surprised if that happened. A reason that I think that is... This is not 2008 all over again where you're going to have a huge crash because of the subprime mortgage crisis where people are in a seriously vulnerable position in their home. Equity in these homes around the country and around the Seattle area is very, very high. A lot of people have a lot of equity in their home so they can afford to lose some equity and not be negative and not be underwater on their home in this market. So uh, it's, it's tough to see a mass foreclosure happening right now in this market in 2023. So it's tough to see that going plummeting too far, but I, I do believe it will continue to, uh, prices will continue to drop as long as the Fed is continuing to raise rates through at least early 2023. So if you're looking to buy a home here, end of 2022, going into 2023, just evaluate your situation. I, I said this at the beginning of the video, if you are looking at short term, you're saying, hey, we, we might move to this area for a year or two, and then it's, it's a good chance we're gonna leave probably shouldn't buy a home because you're going to have a tough time selling that home in a year or two, all things considered. That's very possible that you're going to be in a tough place to be able to get out from under that home. But as we know, long-term real estate values go up. So it's still a good time to buy for a lot of buyers that are saying, hey, this is a, a four to five to 10 year house for us. We don't have to worry about the immediate equity 
in the home. We're just looking more long-term of where we're gonna stay and then we can long-term build those gains in that home in terms of the equity. So evaluate your situation. Like I said, if you're moving over here to the Seattle metro area, you need somebody helping you out with buying a home, be happy to assist you with that process. You can contact me here at my info below. But I appreciate you watching this one.